of God, Lord. We stand in the victory of the cross, Lord. We stand under the blood of the new covenant and we say the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, Lord. We cast down every argument and every yes. high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, yes. bringing every thought into the into the, the captivity to into captivity to Jesus Christ, Lord. Lord, we stand, Lord, in the authority of the risen Son of God, Lord, and we come against any any spirit of witchcraft, any any attack of the enemy, Lord, and we say we cast you down in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus has given us the authority to stand against every darkness, to stand against every plot of the enemy and declare declare the victory of the risen Son of God. We thank you, Lord, that in Psalm 74, you say you have cut off the Leviathan's head and you gave it to the people for food to the people in the wilderness thank you lord that your children that your children have the giants for bread my lord the children who come in the lord in the name of the lord jesus christ lord speak authority over darkness and speak freedom over your people we thank you lord that this is the day that the lord has made lord this is a day of joy this is the day of victory and this is a day lord where your name be glorified forever and ever Lord. forever and ever your name and your glory as you are always seated on the throne Lord we declare we declare the Lord the house of heaven Lord that you have released around your people Lord they are standing they are worshiping and as we worship Lord we be we become the object of your love so today cover us with this love Lord, as we worship you holy god holy god almighty the great i am forever and ever my lord we ask in the name of jesus thank you lord. Well, welcome everybody to our um prophetic fire meeting for february good morning to everybody in australia and good afternoon or good evening to everybody in the united states of america and whatever time it might be in the rest of the world because we get people joining from all over the place we're going to open up with some worship this morning i just want to invite you to enter in and uh holy spirit i just make you welcome right now and just ask you to come and do what only you can do come and have your way in this place right now lord right across every place where this is being broadcast lord let your spirit fall in jesus name yes the world Oh, bow down and say you are God Every man Oh, bow down and say you are King So let's start right now Why would we wait King of glory We just want to be with you, King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you, I just want to be with you, yes the world will bow down and say you are God every man will bow down and say you are king so let's start right now why would we wait we can pray We just want to be with you, the King of 
glory fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Standing in your presence right now, Lord. King of glory, we worship you. By your spirit, Lord, move in our hearts right now. By your spirit, Lord. Move our hearts right now. So I'll sing hallelujah till you come again. And I'll dance in your presence till you come again. I will sing hallelujah till you come again. And I'm dancing in presence till you come again. Yes, I'll sing hallelujah till you come again. And I'll dance in presence till you come again yes lord yes i'll sing hallelujah till you come again and i'll dance in your presence dance in your presence dance in your presence dance in your presence king of glory Take me back to where we started. 
I open up my heart to you. I'm caught up in your presence. And I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave Oh, I'm not here for blessings And Jesus, you don't owe me anything More than anything that you can do I just want you And even when I don't understand it, Lord, you're with me, you're for me, not against me. And even when I don't understand where you're taking me, Lord, your destiny is good and your mercies are forever now. And we choose to trust you, Lord. We choose to trust you, Lord. We choose to trust you, Lord. Even in the trial, Lord, we will stand. We will stand. We will stand in your presence, Lord. The only way is the goodness, Lord. And I know your faithfulness abounds. You take us deeper, Lord. You take us high, Lord. You take us deeper into your presence now. We're hungry and we're thirsty, Lord. And only you can satisfy. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I'm caught up in your presence, and I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Oh, I'm not here for blessings and Jesus, you don't owe me Anything that you can do, I just want you. Yes, Lord. I just want you. Nothing, Nothing else, else, Lord. I just want you. Nothing else will do, Lord. I just want you. Rise day and night, night and 
You are worthy of it all. Oh, from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy. From you are all things, and to you are all things. From you are all things, and to you are all things. Yes, from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. All the glory is yours. You deserve the glory. Deserve the glory. So yours, you deserve the glory. You set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, nothing else. I want more of you, God. Nothing else is right to you. You are worthy of the glory, Lord. You are worthy. So glorious to behold your face, to behold your presence now, fill this place, Lord, fill this place, Lord, fill this place, Lord. Fill this place, Lord. Nothing else, Lord. Fill this place, Lord. Fill this place, Lord. My risen 
cross my victory the temple's veil was torn for me and now I see you as you are crowned in holy majesty as I behold your beauty your holy presence changes me from glory to glory. Your spirit is unveiled in me. Go Lord, we want to thank you for your glorious presence in this place. Lord, we just thank you that in every home, wherever people are joining us in this Zoom meeting, that, Lord, that your holy presence is invading the atmosphere in every room, is invading the atmosphere around every heart, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that fresh hope and fresh faith are arising in every heart because we have opened our hearts to the presence of your Holy Spirit and we have responded to that by worshipping you. Thank you, Lord, that when we worship you, Lord, everything changes. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Wow. What a month it has been. <laughs> wow. Uh, I've been saying to our local church for quite a while now, 
you may as well get used to uh, being comfortable while you're uncomfortable because we are in an uncomfortable season right across the world and particularly in the West. Um, before I get into what the Lord has asked me to share with you guys today, I'm just going to take a few, a couple of minutes just to um, play a little bit of a worship track behind an invitation to uh, sow into our ministry. If you'd like to do that, the details will be coming up uh, on your screen now and uh, I'll come back in a couple of minutes. From the cradle to the grave, your purpose is to save. I surrender to your presence here. Your love is like a fire. It's all that I desire. Consumed and purified. Divine. Okay, I'm back. Just want to thank those who uh, sow into our ministry. You know, uh, we don't do this for money. Uh, I can tell you that uh, right now. And um, when you're called into this type of ministry, it's, uh, it's not um, for the praises of man. Um, the role of the prophetic uh, is without fear and without favour. And so um, those of us who are called to this type of ministry understand that um, uh, the popularity of your ministry before man has got nothing to do with the popularity of your ministry before the Lord. And the primary focus of my prophetic ministry has and is uh, mainly to the remnant church and it has been a great encouragement to me to receive emails from all over the world just a couple of weeks ago uh, i got a email from a pastor in the united states of america who since june last year when i first started releasing these prophetic words over the united states of america it started an intercessors group and i think he's got 19 or 20 people coming to his house every Wednesday night and they pray for their nation, they pray for their government, they pray for the church to rise and that's what it's all about. And uh, 
There's a deep repentance that has been birthed in the remnant church. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll come back to this idea of the remnant towards the end of this prophetic word that I'm going to speak out. But I did notice that somebody in one of their comments on one of the YouTube prophecies said, what's all this stuff about remnant church? It's not even biblical. And, you know, I've learned that it's probably best not to respond to most of the stuff that, that uh, is thrown at me. I've been called uh, a false prophet. I've been told to go to hell. I've been told all sorts of things. But, um, you know, my, my appointment by God is to speak what he tells me to say. So that stuff doesn't bother me. But I do feel like specifically today I need to speak into the idea of the remnant church and show you where it comes from in Scripture so that as I work through the prophetic word the Lord has given me to share today, um, you'll have an understanding of just what it is that God speaks over the remnant when there are difficult times. In Zechariah 8 verses 12, the Bible says, For the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give its fruit, the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their due. I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these. The remnant of God's people are those who remain faithful to covenant with God, whether it be under the old covenant of, of the Old Testament or the new covenant we have with Jesus. There's, uh, there can be all sorts of apostasy going on in the Christian church, but there is always a remnant who put their, who take their stand and say, I'm going to be faithful to God no matter what man has to say about this. And, um, you know, I know that there's a number of people that are watching this now live on the Zoom meeting and who will be watching this video on YouTube. And um, the reason that there's a lot of people that watch from the United States of America is because of the prophetic re words that I've released um, over the last uh, eight months now. And um, I've learned very quickly that there's no point in defending my prophetic words or trying to explain them further because uh, no matter what I say, there's going to be some people that agree and some people that disagree. So I'm not going to defend uh, the words that I've released any longer. I don't see any point to it. But however, for your encouragement, whenever one of the aspects of the prophecies that I've released comes to pass, I'm going to pass those fulfillments on because for one thing, it serves as an encouragement. And secondly, um, uh, as in the following example that I'm going to share with you now, you, weren't, you won't hear some of these on mainstream media, but if you go looking, you will find out that these things are true. So specifically... In uh, the prophetic word that I released on the 11th of September US time, the 12th of September um, Australian time, uh, I prophesied, and this you can find this on our YouTube channel, I prophesied that criminal endeavours on both sides of the aisle, you know, Republican and Democrat in the United States of America, affecting the result of the US election would end up in the highest courts of the land. So I just wanted to give you an update on what is happening with that because everybody seems to think that none of this has come to pass. And uh, so this is what I came across a couple of days ago. That is that the US Supreme Court on February the 5th scheduled several high-profile contest of election lawsuits, um, including the following. Uh, a Michigan, a case to do with uh, Michigan, a case to do with Pennsylvania, a case to do with Wisconsin, and a case to do with Georgia. Now, uh, what they've scheduled these cases for is a Supreme Court conference. In a Supreme Court conference, which will be held on the 19th of February, just Google this and you'll find the information to this. On the 19th of February, they will have a Supreme Court conference at which point they will decide whether they are going to proceed to hear those cases. If they decide during that conference that those cases, whether one or all of them, will proceed, the earliest they will be heard would be in October. Now, I have no idea what the fallout would be after that if they do hear those cases, but I did release a prophetic word that these cases were going to, on both sides, were going to reach the highest courts of the land. The other thing that's worth noting is that, um, you know, the second impeachment trial of Donald Trump. Um, whether you think Donald Trump should should constitutionally be able to be impeached or not, 
the uh, Senate trial is one of the highest courts of the land. So both sides are going to be tested during this uh, next season. And uh, so I just wanted to share that with you. You can, you can search it up. And you'll find that that's what the U.S. Supreme Court in, is doing at the moment. But today I want to give you a word that I believe has a strong focus for the remnant church in the USA, but also here in Australia where the idea of religious freedom is now being sorely tested in Australia. If you want to know the specifics of the Australian situation, because that's not the purpose of today's ministry, um, you can go to the Open Heaven Church YouTube channel and check my sermon from Sunday the 7th of February. Um, basically, there are laws being introduced into Australia that, in effect, criminalise the Christian faith. And that's not an exaggeration. If you, if you want to check into that, um, please feel free. But the morning, uh, this morning, the word I want to share about is about awakening. And what I'm going to give you now is what the Lord has been speaking to me over the last month or so since we last had one of these prophetic fire meetings. So I'll start off with this, that the remnant has been asleep. And uh, I felt like the Lord was showing me that every now and then something would happen to momentarily stir her from her sleep. But her response has been for the most part to waken momentarily, then turn over and go back to sleep. So a little bit of a crisis hits. The church wakes up and prays for a couple of minutes and goes back to sleep. This is figuratively speaking. But I feel the Lord saying that the remnant is now arising. This is the time of awakening and the complacency over the remnant church is being stripped away. The remnant is now becoming aware of what is at stake and is responding. Misplaced loyalties are being abandoned and idols are being stripped away, including political idols. God's people are learning to discern and are learning to discard that which is false. And there's something that we must understand about the prophetic role in all of what's going on on the earth at the moment. The prophetic voice is not limited to what seems reasonable to man. God specializes in the unlikely, the impossible, and the supernatural. And I felt the Lord speaking to me this. My shaking of the earth is only at the beginning. There are key moments and key revelations coming that will serve to forever dispel the illusion that is government, worldly government. Wickedness will be exposed at the highest levels. What has been hidden will now be in plain sight. Those who thought it wisdom to remain on the sidelines will no longer be able to do so. My remnant has cried out for awakening and awakening is here, but it must come first to my people. And I, I, uh, I had a very brief vision of what um, I understood to be the heavenly courts. And uh, as, as I looked out this, uh, across this vast expanse of what appeared to be a huge marble floor, and I heard the Lord say, the courts of heaven are open. Where are my petitioners? Is my ear closed? Are my eyes shut to what is happening? Am I not able to act? Did you think this was going to be a foregone conclusion, the overturning of generations of iniquity? Even now, look around you. The nations of the West are not what they appear to be. They are not the beacons of hope that I raised them to be. The contrast between light and darkness that was so evident even a generation ago has become shades of grey. The celebration of sin has become a stench in my nostrils and my judgment is coming upon the face of the earth. I want to stop for a minute there and say that I am not uh, a prophetic voice that easily speaks of God's judgment because I've known his favor and his grace upon my life in the face of countless mistakes. I know the grace of God. But I want you to understand that when God's judgment become, comes because of the, the, the terrible iniquity and sin of a people, that yet there is a place of blessing that is reserved for God's remnant. 
I, want, I need you to see that. But what I see very clearly is that there is the blood of 60 million innocent aborted children that cries out from the ground. I see the sexual perversion that is not just tolerated but celebrated now. And I, I just see that God is moving now to, uh, to judge and to correct. And I felt the Lord say that inch by inch, my people have ceded, C-E-D-E-D, or conceded, the ground of moral certainty to those whose appearance of wisdom is but a fleeting mirage. The wisdom of man is a mirage. God's ways are perfect and they are true. And I felt the Lord say, I am releasing true discernment. And as my bride rises in authority, truth will be revealed. As the lies are exposed, my people will have clear choices to make. As they awaken, I expect the courts of heaven to resound with the appeals of my people. And I heard the Lord say, my ears are open to their cries. Repentance, revival, restoration. Repentance, revival, restoration. These are the, these are the things that are on God's heart in this season. And he's waiting for our response. The prophetic is an invitation to partner with God to see his purposes released across the face of the earth. I heard him say, do not stop. Do not relent. Do not be dismayed. There is much more to come. I have positioned key people in key positions. They are outnumbered in the natural but empowered by heaven. When they speak, heaven and earth shake because they speak on my behalf. Many have lost heart and are unprepared to go the distance. Do not be one of them. Be my voice. Carry my glory. Do not fear what man can do. It's not up to man. It's up to me, says the Lord. Stand strong, for I am your deliverer, your strong tower, and I am the lifter of your head. Look up, for your vindication is coming. You are not called to reflect the values of the culture around you. You are called to shine with the transforming light of God within you. Culture no longer agrees with what you know to be true. And my people must come out of the slough of despondency, out of despair. Now, what I've just prophesied to you is the fruit of two or three weeks of waiting on the Lord and what he was speaking to me. And I had to stop when he spoke that last sentence to me because I had to look up the meaning of slough. My people must come out of the slough of despondency, out of despair. Slough is like uh, quicksand. Uh, actually, I don't know if it's pronounced slough or sloth, but I think it's slough. Um, but it's, it's like a quicksand. And I heard the Lord saying off the back of my people must come out of the slough of despondency, out of despair. My people must adhere to a greater reality that the kingdom of God is always founded on absolute truth and has never changed and has never bowed to prevailing culture. And then I discovered that slough has another meaning. To slough off is to shed or cast off something that is dead. And I felt that the Lord was ministering to me that he sees the tiredness and the discouragement and that there are many that need to just slough it off. Let it go. Let the discouragement and the despondency and the despair go. So before I go any further, I want to pray this over you. Those of you, those of you who have had disappointment, despondency, discouragement, even despair, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I break that off you now. Let it slough off your mind, will, and emotions. I speak over you that your spirit man is beginning to rise up now to meet the challenges of this season, that you are indeed part of God's remnant army and your position now must be one of authority. Your position must be one that is armed. You must have your shield high and your sword ready, the sword of the spirit for what God wants to do in this season. I break that despondency, that disappointment, that despair, that discouragement off you today in the name of Jesus. I felt the Lord uh, ministered some more to me that the West is polarized. There is no longer even an attempt to pay lip service to truth. 
And I heard the Lord say, and this is where um, we touch on the area of God's judgment, because I heard the Lord say something specific to me, which was bring out your wares, W-A-R-E-S. And when I started to search for this, because I knew in my heart that this was a reference straight out of Scripture, God took me to Jeremiah 10 verse 17. Uh, which says, gather up your wares from the land, O inhabitant of the fortress. Gather up your wares from the land, O inhabitant of the fortress. And another rendering of, O inhabitant of the fortress, a literal interpretation or translation would be, you who dwell under siege. And the context uh, of this scripture in Jeremiah was that having not responded to the call of Jeremiah to repentance, the nation that he ministered to was being taken into captivity. Yet God's redemptive purpose was, was there in that he told the people to prepare for this. And we know that the remnant were prospered even in the face of being under an ungodly regime. And so uh, later in Jeremiah, he says this, because we know that in that time that the people of Judah were taken into captivity and served a season of 70 years in Babylon. But before they went, Jeremiah ministered this to them. And this is for the remnant. This is, this is God's promise that he, will, that he will uphold us, that he will provide for us, that he will even make us flourish and prosper. Because Jeremiah 29, 7, before they go into captivity, he says this, Seek of the peace, uh, seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive, and pray to the Lord for it. For in its peace you will have peace. We are called in a season where um, it seems that that things are being turned upside down. That we must continue to pray for the cities and the nations that we are part of. And I want to be clear that I'm not saying that the remnant in the U.S. is being carried away to another country. That's not what this is about. This is the illustration from the book of Jeremiah. What this is, is an admonishment to those living under ungodly rule. I heard the Lord say further that the influences in the spiritual realm are colliding with huge force at this time, but most in my body have been unaware. Awakening must come so that the manifold wisdom of God can be made known with authority by the ecclesia of the Lord against these encroachments of the enemy. And I heard the Lord say that now is the time that my people must take courage, must be bold and courageous. I heard the Lord say my people are tired and discouraged. They are discovering that there is an acceleration of the enemy's agenda against them. The enemy has an ag agenda against you. He has it against your family. He has it against your community, your city, your state and your nation. And that, um, that agenda is being accelerated in this season. Reason. But the, the Lord wants to remind us that true courage is born of faith. Faith does not deny the mountain that's in front of you, but acknowledges that God has a way up the mountain. God has a way over the mountain. God has a way through the mountain. And if necessary, if it needs to be cast uh, into the sea, that whole mountain into the sea like Jesus spoke of, God will give us the gift of faith to see those mountains move or take us through into what he has for us. I heard the Lord also say that the refiner's fire is doing its work so that my people will be known as a people who do not stand for the lies and deception of the enemy, but stand on my eternal truth. As they do, they see the rivers in the wilderness before they appear. This is what the eyes of faith is about. The eyes of faith see God's incredible provision for you in the spiritual realm. The eyes of faith see that God is doing something on our behalf and it pulls it into actual reality around us. The eyes of faith see the rivers of provision that God has for us even before we see them with our natural eyes. God is speaking of provision in the emotional realm. God is speaking of provision in the financial realm. God is speaking of provision um, in every realm, every sphere of influence that you are part of. God is saying that there is a protection and a favor over you because you stand for his truth. 
And so I just want to pray this over you right now before I close off this this, uh, prophetic word. I want to pray over you the eyes of faith. Lord, I would ask in the name of Jesus that you would open all our eyes to acknowledge your truth. That, that we would acknowledge by faith what you are about to release to us, even in the presence of our enemies, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that you are doing something extraordinary among your people, that you are awakening us. And as our eyes are opened, our eyes are open not just in the natural to see the reality of the world around us, but our eyes are open to the spiritual realms that you have called us into, Lord. You call us into that place of authority that your manifold wisdom might be made known to principalities and powers, that the encroachments of the enemy would be pushed back, that, Lord, that righteousness would prevail once more in our nations. I pray, Father God, for those in this meeting today and those that are going to watch this on YouTube, that they would drop the criticism, they would drop the judgment and receive by faith what God has for them, the eyes of faith to see past the mountain in front of them in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to finish with uh, finish this word with two scriptures. The first one's from Joshua 24, and I'll give you the context of this, that uh, Joshua has taken uh, the people of Israel across the Jordan, and now they are in their promised land, and they've been fighting all these battles. And God is giving them, uh, God is giving them a word of encouragement through Joshua, and it warns of the past, It warns of what's around them at the moment and it warns them about their primary call. And this is what he says to them. Now, therefore, fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. He's reminding them that as the people of God, they were rescued out of terrible iniquity and bondage and they should never look back to the places where they were before. And then he says this, And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river, in other words, back in Egypt, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And just as that prophetic call went out, all those thousands of years ago to a people who were in a hostile land, a land that they had been called to conquer in the spirit. So the prophetic call of God is coming out to us now. Don't look back to the idols of the past and don't look to the idols that are around you. Make the decision in your heart to serve the Lord. And when we do, the promise of Zechariah 8 verse 12 becomes ours. What's that promise? I mentioned it at the beginning of this message. For the seed shall be prosperous. The vine shall give its fruit, the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their due. I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these. These are the promises of God over us. And what he's asking us to do is stand strong in the face of persecution. Stand strong in the face of uh, laws that are being enacted, which are totally against the will, the purpose and the heart of God. Stand strong. Continue to pray. Continue to intercede. Continue to prophesy. Whatever you do, do not despise prophecy in this season. It is such a powerful weapon. The apostolic and the prophetic are coming together in this season like never before. There's going to be a merge of those two um, areas of fire fivefold ministry that it's going to see regions transformed. God has incredible things in store for us in the future, but we must not give up hope. We must not be uh, allow discouragement, despair or dismay to take hold of our hearts and hold us captive as we were before. I know what it's like to be in hopelessness, but when Jesus encountered me, my life was turned upside down for the better. And no matter what the material circumstances or your situation might try to speak to you as opposite to that, the truth of the Lord stands firm that you are free when you are submitted to and serving Him. Hallelujah. Lord, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for what you're doing in the United States of America. I want to thank you for what you're doing in my nation of Australia, actually both nations, Australia 
in the U.S. because I've got dual citizenship. But I just thank you, Father, for what you are doing. I thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the past. I thank you for what you're doing now. And I thank you especially for what you're about to release. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Lucas, I'm going to get you to put the, uh, the screen up with all the people in the meeting. It's kind of tough preaching to a camera, but now I can see, <laughs> see all you guys now. And uh, welcome into the meeting. I, I can see that uh, the, uh, the numbers have gone down since we last had a meeting. And uh, I know that that's, you know, this is why the call to awakening is so profound at the moment, because uh, what I was speaking about um, is, is, is a reality that that the the church, the wider church, needs to be awakened in this season. And those of us in this meeting are part of a remnant that are to release the fire of God to the rest of the church that we're involved in. Um, and so God wants to release trans, transformation across, uh, you know, across individual lives, across families, communities, cities, nations even. And we are part of that remnant that brings that to pass you are not outnumbered in your situation i'm not outnumbered in my situation if i have god standing next to me man i have a majority of one which is god amen no matter who comes against me so i want you to be encouraged in that i, w I wanted to minister into some uh some words of knowledge that um in particular my wife kerry was receiving i'm just going to check my phone and see if any of our other team Send me anything else. Okay. I see that there's a huge number of people that have registered for the meeting, but for some reason haven't been able to, to join us. But it's okay. We'll put it up on YouTube later. Um, so over the last 24 hours, my wife and I in particular were waiting on the Lord for words of knowledge because we believe that... Um, that the Lord wants to heal. Every time we have one of these meetings, we believe that God is going to release healing and deliverance. And so um, I'm just going to release some of these words of knowledge. And um, if the, if you're responding to one of those words of knowledge, um, I want you to just uh, wave to us because we can, if I can't see you, Lucas can see you on the screen. And um, I'll bring you up on the screen. We'll pray for you. And then I'll pass you on to one of our ministry teams for the completion of that deliverance or healing. Um, so there's somebody in the meeting uh, this morning and you have elevated pH levels in your blood. Now, this is not a condition that I'm familiar with. Um, and I know that in some cases it can affect uh, your lungs. And uh, uh, I had to look this up because all I got was the word elevated pH levels in your blood. And so sometimes that can affect your lungs and other times it can affect a diabetic condition. That's as much as I've been able to find out about it. So if there's somebody who's got um, that condition, you're aware that you have elevated pH levels in your blood, um, I'll need you to, to, um, to uh, just give us a wave so that we can minister to you. There's somebody else here um, in the meeting and you have a condition called syndesmosis. And uh, syndesmosis is uh, an ankle injury that occurs very high on the ankle. It's quite common with footballers, um, as I understand. Um, and so somebody with, a, with some sort of problem um, in the upper part of your ankle, there's somebody else uh, in the meeting that's suffering from an irregular heartbeat. And I believe that God wants to minister into that condition. Uh, there's somebody else in the meeting and you have dabbled in the occult or witchcraft in the past and um, and your way of addressing this issue has been that you've tried to cleanse yourself. It's almost like you wanted to, to do deliverance ministry on yourself, but you're still being attacked um, by the residue of this witchcraft and the occult and God wants to do a mopping up exercise today and get rid of the last little bits of influence of that over your life and god is saying it stops today there's somebody else in the meeting um and you've you've got that condition called um obsessive compulsive disorder ocd 
and in this particular case, it's, a, it's especially to do with cleanliness. And so you're constantly trying to clean, whether it's yourself or your kitchen or your house, or it, it, there's a, an obsession with cleanliness that you know is outside the normal uh, boundaries. Uh, I believe there's somebody else, Kerry. My wife, Kerry, got a, a, a word for somebody who had a bandaged elbow. Has anyone got a, a, a bandage on their elbow? Just give me a quick wave. Oh, you do. Diana? Awesome. I'm going to come back to you in a, in a moment um, because we've got one more to, to give. Um, somebody who's got... Uh, now, the word that, that, that my wife got was dysphoria. Now, um, many of us would be aware that uh, dysphoria, its most common, um, its most common usage today is to do with gender dysphoria. But Kerry was saying that um, this is a dysphoria uh, to do with food. And so I had to look it up. And so... Um, uh, when I looked it up, it's like an anxiety or an agitation in your heart to do with food and to do with the consumption of food. So whether this could feed into something like bulimia or anorexia or one of those conditions, I'm not too sure, but an agitation or anxiety about what you eat. Um, and there's somebody else that's got an ongoing infection and that infection is tormenting you. So I'm going to get uh, some more responses in a minute, but I want to particularly first minister to Diana Gratz, who was, um, who was responding to the word of knowledge about the bandaged elbow. Have you got her up on screen? There she is. Can I hear her? Are you speaking, Diana? Yeah. No, I'm just showing you the elbow. Is it's my whole arm is bandaged. Wow. <laughs> Well, there's a confirmation for those of you who wonder if the word of knowledge ministry is real. Is <laughs> a confirmation right here because there's not a huge number of people in our meeting today. However, uh, Diana has responded specifically to that word of knowledge for the bandaged elbow. So what happened to it, Diana? I actually had breast cancer. And when they removed the breast, they took the, uh, the cancerous lymph nodes. And now I have swelling down the whole side of my um left side okay so i have uh it's called lymphedema okay so they and took out a lymph node the, and that's that's affected your arm it's it's an absence of lymph nodes oh, okay that's affected my arm and okay. the cancer came back in my ribs so okay. are you um, are you cancer free at the moment no it's metastatic okay so what's what stage do they say it is well, that would be considered stage four. Okay. So I've got a couple of testimonies to share with you before we pray, Diana. The first one is that um, for, I think, 18 years, we ran a ministry in our city called Church in the Park where we'd set up um, we'd set up a worship team, barbecue, uh, jumping castle, and just worship God in the park, preach the word, minister to people that came through the park. And they, we ministered one day to uh, a lady who was on her way – I think it was a lady, could have been a man, was, this was a few years ago, um, on her way to the casualty, the casualty or emergency room of the local hospital because the park where we held our outreach was opposite the hospital. They were walking through and they had a bandage on their wrist because they'd had some sort of accident and, um, and it was serious enough that they, they were going to emergency and they knew that they were going to have to have stitches. And so... Um, Somebody in our team kind of accosted them as they were walking across the park and said, look, would you like to come over and have one of our team pray for you for this? And they said, oh, yeah, okay. So they came over somewhat reluctantly. We prayed over them. The fire of God went through that wrist and went through, the, through every part of her arm. She could feel that something was happening. She continued on to the emergency department. They unwrapped the wrist and she was completely healed. And they didn't have to do yes, anything. So that's the first encouragement. That's to that's for you to to look at that bandage with the eyes of faith that I've just been speaking about. And the second one is that my brother Mark had uh, stage four melanoma, and uh, the recovery rate for stage four melanoma is extremely low. I was with him when he went into uh, the primary 
um, cancer hospital in Australia, uh, probably the primary one in the southern hemisphere for that matter, because Australia's got a high incidence of uh, melanoma, when they said to him that he basically had six months to live, but God intervened. He intervened medically, but he also intervened in the miraculous. And um, without belaboring the point, uh, there was one point where, because he had a tumour under his lungs and the, the tumour was creating pressure, upward pressure on his lungs, he's finding it difficult to breathe. He was still continuing his ministry. He was out in the outback of Australia in this little Spanish church in the middle of outback Queensland and he was supposed to get up and preach and he couldn't because the tumour was pressing on his lungs. The pastor of that church gathered the members of that church around him and prayed for him. And 10 minutes later, he got up to preach. And from that day forward, he had steady improvement and he has been cancer free for, I think it's five years now. Praise God. <laughs> Completely cancer free. So there's your, there's your second encouragement. And so... Uh, guys, everybody uh, in this meeting, I want you to stretch your your your, your hands out um, in the authority that the Lord has given you. The Lord spoke to his disciples even before they were filled with the Holy Spirit and said, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. So Diana, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak into that condition in your arm and I command it to come back in the right order. I speak to the cancer that has invaded your ribs in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth and I cancel the assignment of the spirit of death over your life. I declare that you shall live according to the word of the Lord. I declare Isaiah 53 over you that Jesus has already borne all your afflictions, all your infirmities, everything that has affected you in the physical realm. Jesus already paid a price for you to be free from. And we declare freedom over you today in the mighty name of Jesus. I just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing right now in Diana. I thank you for the release of your Holy Spirit's fire into that arm oh, and into that oh, rib cage. Oh, I thank you, oh, Lord, that the oh, impartation of the Spirit is hitting her right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. How are you doing there, Diana? Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm going to put you in with uh, my wife, Kerry, and Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie's walked through her own cancer issue and God brought her out the other side, praise God. And they're going to minister to you some more. Is that okay? Great. Praise God. And uh, yes. thanks thanks for joining us in the meeting today. It was obviously God's appointed time because that word of knowledge I was so, so specific, a bandage on your elbow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, nice to meet you, you Diana. And, and Lucas is going to put you in that room now. All right. Thank Bless you. Bless you. All right. Okay, so if somebody uh, if somebody wants to respond to any of those any of the other words of knowledge, can you just give us a wave and uh, and we'll put you up on screen and minister to you as well. Thank you, Lord. So I'll just run through them again. Elevated pH levels in your blood. So this is, this would do be to do, I believe, either with a breathing difficulty or with uh, a diabetic issue. Um, Syndesmosis, somebody with a with some sort of ankle injury, uh, somebody with an irregular heartbeat, um, somebody who has dabbled in the occult. Okay, so I see Phyllis waving at me. Phyllis there, ready to go. You want to put Phyllis up? No worries. And before I speak to Phyllis, I just want to encourage you guys with, with about something that the ministry of the word of knowledge is simply an invitation to acknowledge that God is speaking your condition with the intent that the ministry of the word of knowledge will be minute, will be followed by the ministry of the gift of healing or deliverance so that um, so that you can be set free of whatever it is that you might be carrying. So Phyllis, what's the word of knowledge that you're responding to? Um, for my mom. Okay. For my mom, um, uh, she, she, she has, her, her lower back has three Ds that is uh, cracked and it's uh, it has been many years, and um, 
she she can't walk properly and um just three days ago she has this um her leg is uh swollen sorry okay is it is that like a lower leg yeah yeah it's the ankle that is swollen okay okay yeah so um are you going to be seeing your mother yes yes i just seen her yesterday she just told me that three days ago she has um she felt that uh, there is numbness at the soles of her both her feet and the uh, um the swollen has gone up to oh, at the knee now okay so but she does have specific pain in that ankle right and that's what you're responding to so when are you seeing her next uh uh, when, whenever, whenever. So sometime in the next couple of days, for instance? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So we're going to pray for you, and I, I believe you're yeah. going to receive an impartation that you can pass on to her. It says in right. the New Testament that they even gave handkerchiefs that had been blessed to people, and yeah. it, just what had been stored in those handkerchiefs of, out of an impartation from the Holy Spirit was sufficient to see diseases healed and sicknesses uh, reversed. So Phyllis, everybody just stretch out your hands to Phyllis if you could. And Phyllis, uh, we just pray for you that uh, right now you are receiving an impartation of healing power to release over your mother. I speak to your mother's condition of syndesmosis, that uh, pain that is, uh, that, that's around her upper ankle. I speak a reversal of that. And I thank you, Lord, that Phyllis is receiving from your spirit right now, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that there is an impartation being released in Jesus' name. Um, Phyllis, can I ask you a question? Does your family have a, a background of ancestor worship or anything to do with uh, with uh, Taoism or Buddhism? Uh, you you have told me about Taoism. I've tried to find out, but I I, I couldn't find any answers. Okay, does your family history include anything to do with the occult or with ancestor worship, anything like that? Maybe there is because I, I'm, I, I don't know. I've been trying to ask and I, I didn't get any answers. But if there is, is I, you, can you pray over it? Well, I just, uh, I, I just saw uh, when I was praying for you, I just saw a response in your face. It indicated to me that there's something there that needs to be dealt with. So I'm going to I'm going to pass you on to Rose and Renee. Is that okay with you, Rose? Has has Rose ministered to you before, Phyllis, in one of these meetings? Uh, no, before is Kerry. Oh, okay. All right. I'm going to put you in with Rose and Renee and and just take a few minutes if you could, Rose, and just uh, I believe there's something there that needs to be dealt with in the spirit. But Phyllis, I I I believe you have received an impartation of the Holy Spirit that you can pass on to your mother and that that ankle injury will be reversed in fact i pray over her uh, her whole body now that the discs would be repaired and that the numbness in the soles of her feet would be reversed that the swelling in her legs would begin to come down i just thank you father god that you are a miracle working god and in the name of Jesus, we speak by faith what we do not yet see in the natural so that what we see in the spirit is released in the natural in Jesus' name. Health and wholeness to her in Jesus' name. Thank you, Thank Phyllis. You. I'm going to put you in with Renee and Rose now. God bless you. We're going to go back to those words of knowledge and... Uh, just wanted to see if uh, other people wanted to respond to any words of knowledge. Hey, John, I do have uh, in chat, I have Lyndon. Lyndon? Um, oh, yeah, I yeah. Find. Give me one second. She's yeah. over on the bottom right there with the pink glasses on. Oh, yes, on. awesome. <laughs> I'll chuck you up now, Lyndon. Hi, Lyndon, how are you doing? Hey, John, good, thank you. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I know you're here in Australia with us because we saw you yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yeah. well, which of those words are you responding to? None of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just in, um, I can't sit. I can only stand or lie down. I'm In my left glute, I've just got this intense pain and it's in my leg as well. Okay. Yeah. Is this like a sciatic pain? It felt like a pinched nerve at first. Okay. Yeah. But now it's really 
sort of yeah I, I guess it could be yeah okay. when I press like it feels like I need a good massage but I've I've been googling Christian masseuse that I can't find <laughs> anything other than in America <laughs> Well, uh, I don't think this is a great time to be travelling by plane to the United States of America unless God <laughs> directs can't you there. I'd but, have to stay But I'm going, to send, the I'm going to send you over there in the spirit because I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to put you in with Thank Paul and Darcy and they're going to pray for you. Thank and you'll you. be getting prayed for in Wisconsin and it's what, about That's 20 right. below zero over there. Is that right, Paul and Darcy? Yeah, 20 below zero, so rug up, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've got my rug here. <laughs> I'm going to pray for you right now, Lyndon. Lord, I, I just want to thank you. <laughs> you don't have to take it that literally. But anyway, <laughs> Lord, I just thank you for your impartation of healing to Lyndon right now. I thank you, Father God, that that, uh, that, that cramped nerve in her glute that is affecting and giving her sciatic pain down her leg, I just thank you, Father God, that she is being released from that now, Lord. Yeah. I just thank you, Lord, that 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 the pain is 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 disappearing now. I thank you. I thank you. Is that is that pain diminishing actually, now? Actually, you know what? It it is, and uh -huh. I can actually feel it from my shoulder, like releasing from my shoulder all the way down my leg. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, mm. Lord. I thank you, Lord, that that you are releasing that healing to Lyndon right now. I pray, Father God, that this healing would be made complete. I thank you, Lord, that the spirit of infirmity behind this thing is being dealt with in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Paul and Darcy, can I put Lyndon in with you guys? Thank you so Over much, there in John. sunny Wisconsin. God bless Wisconsin. God's not yes, finished with Wisconsin. <laughs> no, I'm praying for you all. Oh, well, yeah. Bless you, Lyndon. Thank you. thank you, John. Love you. See ya. Uh, is anybody else responding to the word of knowledge? And I do want to touch. Oh, okay, Shannon, if you could put Shannon up. Hi, Shannon, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Where are you joining us from? Uh, Tacoma, Washington. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Now you're. Are you at home at the moment? Yes. Uh huh. What's the speaker stand for in the background? Uh, my husband and I, we do uh, revival meetings and um, also sometimes Zoom meetings. Oh, wow. Revival meetings. Yeah. Oh, awesome. So how did you hear about us? How did you hear about this? Uh, YouTube. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yes. have, you, have, and have, I, you, have you been following those prophetic words for a little while or is this, cause this is the first meeting mm -hmm. you've been in, right? Yes, I've been listening to the prophetic words. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. And how are things going for you in Washington? Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. As well as can be expected, you know, praying for this area, praying for my neighborhood. It's pretty um, crazy, actually, in my neighborhood, even. You can tell spiritually that things have um, shifted. Uh -huh. Like, even like the neighborhood, like garbage all over the place and people driving by really fast and lawlessness and things like that so yeah. but still i love my neighborhood and praying for this area yeah amen yeah and what's the what's the word of knowledge that you're responding to i wasn't sure if it was for me or not uh the food dysphoria yeah um i have a lot of food sensitivities like hashimoto's and uh what's a hashimoto it's a thyroid issue oh, autoimmune okay. where uh, my body attacks my thyroid okay and so when i eat certain foods um it can cause chronic fatigue um it's there's a lot of sensitivities to food so i eat very little variety and and it you, is stressful <laughs> yeah so that's what that's what i was going to ask you do you, if you have anxiety around that or you feel agitated about about uh, you know, what you're going to eat and things like that. Yeah. And especially when I want to eat with other people or people invite me over for dinner, uh -huh. it's kind of embarrassing, you yeah. know. Um. Okay. Cause you got to give them a list of what you can't eat. Right. 
I'd just rather bring something on my own, you know, because oh, no, I don't want to put people through that kind of trouble. Well, yeah. I, I believe absolutely that this word is for you, the food dysphoria Praise one. Praise God. And, and, and I, believe <laughs> be God wants, I believe God really wants to deal with it. Um, so, so, Lord, I, I just want to thank you for Shannon. And, and firstly, Lord, I would acknowledge that this is an attack upon her and her husband's ministry, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that they have a heart for revival to break out in an area that um, is obviously undergoing a lot of spiritual attack and that there's a change in the atmosphere in that area, Lord. And we would speak, Father God, uh, an invasion of godly presence around their home. Lord, mm -hmm. I thank you, Father God, that even in the face of what's going or going on around them, Lord, that you would put them in a place of uh, uh, the, the the picture that comes to my mind is 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 like a, an oasis in the middle of an area of wilderness, and that there is provision there for your spiritual nourishment. And I feel like the the Lord is saying to you that he is pleased with the commitment that you have shown to pursue what he called you to, even in the face of uh, division, abandonment and discouragement. Division, mm -hmm. abandonment and discouragement. And so I believe that the Lord wants to encourage you that he is bringing reinforcements alongside you and that those that are coming alongside you will carry more authority than those who left. Amen. And so, Lord, I, I just thank you for, for this this uh, this godly sister, Lord, who has a heart for revival for her city, Lord. I pray, Father God, over this food dysphoria in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that deliverance is hers today. I thank you, Father God, that this afflicting spirit is bound and rebuked in the name of Jesus. And I see this thing being dragged away from you in chains right now. Thank you, Lord, for what you are doing uh, for Shannon. Thank you, Father God, for the praises, the high praises that go up in that place, Lord. I thank you, Father God, you are pushing back every encroachment of the enemy that has come against her and her husband her family and her ministry, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that deliverance is hers today. In Jesus' name. Uh, Lucas, who do we have free in the ministry teams? We have Michael and Judy. Okay. Is it possible for you to put Michael and Judy in a room together? Okay, yeah, no I'm, worries. I'm going to get uh, Michael, who's... Uh, a New Zealander who's in Australia as part of our ministry, and Judy, who's in America, who uh, comes and serves on our ministry team, and they're going to minister to you together. They haven't done that before, but I know you guys will work together. Michael and Judy will work together well. And I believe God's going to expose and cut off the root of this food dysphoria thing, Shannon. And I just want to bless you and bless your ministry, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. And God email me you. the testimony when it, when, it, when it manifests. Amen. Okay. All right. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You can. Okay. Do we have any more responses to words of knowledge? Just having a look. We did. We did at one stage have Laurie in the chat, but it looks like she is away from the keyboard, so we'll put her up later. Okay. Um, so the ones that um, that haven't been answered yet, uh, um, and if this is you, please don't be embarrassed about something being called out because it's only being called out because God wants to help you with it. So if you've got the OCD issue, um, that needs to be responded to. Um Irregular heartbeat um, uh, and an issue to do with ongoing infection. Um, I think we've identified the person who's got. No, oh no, we haven't. It, it, or if you've uh, dabbled in the occult or witchcraft in the past. So um, I, I would also stress that 
Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be specifically for you personally, these words of knowledge. It could be um, a family member that has the issue and we can just as effectively pray for them. So if you'd like to, if you'd like to respond to one of those words, can you give me a quick wave now? Okay, Sandra Zaniska. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Did I say that right? Just need your mic on. No, I can't hear you. Sorry, that may have been my fault. There you go. Oh, there we go. Yes, Sandra Zaniska, is that right? Yes, yes, oh. very good. Nobody really can do that. You did very well. Oh, there you go. Is that, um? let me, uh, let me have a guess at this. Is that a Czechoslovakian name? Uh, Polish. Is that close? <laughs> Polish? Uh, might be. It's Polish or Russian. They're okay. kind of around in the same okay. region. All right. Well, Sandra, where, where are you? You're in the United States, yeah? Yes, I'm in Wisconsin. Oh, great. Uh, uh, just uh, outside of Kenosha. Oh, right. That place is so, saw some real upheaval. Real oh, upheaval. Yes. Yeah. Yes, but I'll tell you, God's moving though. Yeah. He is. He is. Has an, we have an outpouring of the Spirit of God going on at our church right now, and it's amazing. Wow! Praise so God. Whatever the devil's trying to do, the Lord is. Um, he's pouring His Spirit out in multiple times, more than that. So. Amen. When the enemy comes against you, God's always got a way of of multiplying back to His people. Yes, uh, He does. And, yes, and, He does. And and reversing what the enemy does. I see you've got a very heavy duty coat behind you on that banner. So it must be cold where you are. It's freezing. <laughs> it, yeah, it was like eight degrees in the middle of the day today. It's very cold. Wow. And we have a ton of snow. So. Wow. I've got an invitation to Wisconsin, but I think I'll leave it till summer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might want to. Yeah, well, that might be like maybe June. Right. <laughs> the way our our uh, our cold stays around, it might be it might be a, a while yet. Uh, okay. So, Sandra, which one of these words are you are you um, responding to? Um, for my daughter, uh, the food dysphoria. Okay. Um, she uh, when she was um, she was fine when she was born, um, and then when she was about two, she had a surgery uh, for an umbilical hernia. And after that, it seemed that um, she, there was many, many things that she would not eat. And even now, um, the amount of things that she eats, uh, you can count easier than the amount of things she doesn't eat. Wow. And I really feel like it is, um, it, it has something to do with a spirit of fear or something okay. because she can't even explain why um she doesn't like she tries other things but a lot of times she's just too afraid okay and i just really feel it's it's i don't know if it's a generational curse or, or what it is but it's it's something that she she really needs to be prayed for okay i bet i bet you she's had um i bet you she's had prayer for this in the past right because obviously you're a strong christian yes but mm -hmm. um it, you know one of the things that i've noticed is that like in, in our church, for instance, we can have somebody that's been going through something for quite a long time. And, and sometimes it just takes God bringing somebody in from outside, even though the person's been ministered to multiple times within the congregation. Right. Somebody comes in from outside, perhaps with fresh faith or just that impartation of the Lord for that time that, that yes. provides the breakthrough. And so that's what we're well, going to believe for you today. She... um. Two years ago, this past week, uh, her father passed away. And um, ever since then, I think she has kind of turned her back on God. Okay. Um, she, I think she feels kind of like he's, he's let her down. Okay. What's her name? Madison. Madison. Wow. She, she named after Madison, Wisconsin? Yeah, no. <laughs> no, her father's name was Matthew. Oh, and okay. so Madison is like the son or daughter of Matthew. So that's why she's named Madison. Okay. I didn't think she'd be named after a city, but you never know. <laughs> no, that's a really very liberal city. No, no. Okay, right. Yeah, I've heard that too. All right. We're going to pray for Madison now. And just before we do, Lucas, uh, is there any one of our teams that hasn't ministered to somebody yet? Nope. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll go to the, the next available after I prayed for her, okay? No worries. So, Lord, I, d I just want to thank you for Madison, Lord, and I want to thank you, Lord, for Sandra's um, 
um, desire, heartfelt desire. I, uh, I just feel that that mother's pain, that uh, I can sense that mother's pain in your heart, Sandra, for your daughter and that you want the best for her and that it's been so difficult for her, not just with the food dysphoria, but with the, the loss of her father. And so I just want to thank you, Father God, that as you heal this condition, so that so Madison's heart is turned back towards you, Lord. I would speak out, Father God, that that anointing of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers, that's so important in the spiritual realm, that Madison, Lord, would recognize her heavenly father as being a good God, that it's not god's fault that her dad died i want to thank you father god that there is a release coming to madison right now and i want to thank you father god that that release is going to remove the food dysphoria from her i also want to speak um over over you sandra and what i see around you is like a a, a gray kind of foggy cloud that has tried to impose itself upon your mind will and emotions ever since uh madison's dad died i just just see this this thing that's tried to come against you and give you a negative mindset tried to uh, to to introduce hopelessness to your thoughts and i and i i feel the lord showing me that um you have always been a person that has been hopeful and it's been a big challenge to you and so I, I, I want to break that off you right now in the name of Jesus, that this hopelessness, discouragement, despair, all these things that have come against you, they're being broken now by the power of the blood of Jesus. I release that impartation of the Holy Spirit over yes. you today to be free in Jesus' name. Free in Jesus' name. And I also speak over your church in Kenosha. Lord, I thank you, Father God, that this city that suffered such a devastation, Lord, with the riots and the fires and all the rest of it. I pray, Father God, that you would make the enemy repay seven times what has been stolen, Lord. I pray, Father God, prosperity and blessing over Kenosha. And I continue to prophesy, Lord, as you led me to in, I think, July of last year, that black and white churches will unite across that city in revival in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, our church is um, a diverse church. We have a lot of different Hallelujah. nationalities and a lot of black and white. So Hallelujah. God is moving and he is bringing He is bringing that to pass. So thank you so much. Awesome. I'm going to put you in with one of the ministry teams, Lucas. Yep, I will put her in with Pastor Kerry's team. Okay, great. If Pastor Kerry, you could rejoin your breakout room for me. Thank you. And I just want to do a uh, check if Pastor Chuck is in the meeting. Is Pastor Chuck in the meeting? There he is. <laughs> do you want me to pin yeah, him? Yeah, put, put, put him up for a minute. No worries. And after that, we do have a response for, for the OCD okay. word. Okay. Okay. How are you going, Pastor Chuck? How are you doing? I'm um, well, thank you. Thank you for your email and letting me know what God's been speaking to you and what he's been releasing to you, your church. And for and thank you for reminding me about the prophetic word I gave you that your ministry would be like a Mack truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I've, I was really... I've talked about that many times. Yeah. <laughs> I was really encouraged to hear that after that prophetic word that you got, um, you got a church established. Uh, you're in a where it's called a warehouse church. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. And then, but then I got an email from you. I think last week saying that um, that the building was being taken back and you needed a new facility. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. Okay, and you haven't found that facility yet. Well, they gave us till June to to be out. Um, so I'm leaving it in the Lord's hands. We're kind of keeping an eye open for this area. Okay. And trusting that he's going to bring something through. Okay. So uh, I, I don't uh, I don't know what the Lord's going to release right now, but I just felt like I needed to bring you up on screen and pray for you. Okay. Okay. So, Lord, I, I just want to thank you for Pastor Chuck. I want to thank you, Father God, for um, 
but Lord, the determination of a Mack truck, Lord, we, <laughs> I know how powerful those trucks are, Lord. And, and, uh, so uh, I just thank you, Father. What I'm seeing right now, Pastor Chuck, is, is, is as soon as I was reminded of the Mack truck analogy, I saw as if uh, you guys were on a highway, so you were moving out of where you currently are. But I saw those yellow and black uh, barriers across the road. But I saw the truck smash straight through those barriers. And I, feel, like the, yeah. I feel that the Lord is, is saying to you that... Um, that you are going to uh, see and discern where you need to go next, but that the enemy is going to raise a roadblock across that path and that when that roadblock comes, you are not to be discouraged or dismayed by it, but, you know, go back a gear, pedal to the metal and straight through the obstruction in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I just thank you, Father God, for the Mack truck emblem, that bulldog, Lord, that just doesn't let go. Now, this Amen. is so profoundly prophetic about you, Chuck, because you are you are like a, the British bulldog. Once you get your jaws around the promise of God, you refuse to let go. And God Amen. is going to honor that determination. He's going to uh, honor that, uh, I won't say pig-headedness, I'll say bulldoggedness. <laughs> <laughs> because there's a difference between stubbornness and 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 a determination to hold on to the promises of God. I just believe God is breaking through for you, and that um, that um, you you there's going to be a point at which you're going to have to step out of what you see in the natural and receive in the spirit what God has for you. Mm -hmm. As you do, you're going to go through that roadblock, and and God will take you into where He has next for you. Amen. 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 God bless you, Pastor Chuck. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, we've got one more response to word of knowledge for OCD. Is that right? Yes. Yes. If I can find. There you go. I've just asked you to unmute. All good to go. Hi. How Mighty. are you? How you doing? I'm well, thank you. I was going to say, with a name like Mamie, you must be in the United States of America. I know, and it's an old-fashioned name. Yeah. No one's named Mamie. <laughs> right. but, um, Whereabouts in the United States are you? I just moved to West Virginia from okay. Maryland. Okay, okay. Uh, so I've been here about a week and a half. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And you're responding with a word of knowledge about OCD? Yes. Um, I was actually diagnosed with it a couple of years ago. And what blew my mind about it was OCD, the definition, it's more or less you're addicted to certainty. Right. And it's about certainty. And so um, I do find myself exhausted at the end of the day, like especially with the move, having everything in its place. Um, also, always my mind constantly going about certainty, like if this doesn't happen right, then you actually will marshal your thoughts right. around how it could happen. And oh. you then make it certain in your head. And that will be exhausting. <laughs> it sounds exhausting to especially me, mate. <laughs> yes, yes. Especially with the election. You know, oh, that okay. was, that's tough too. But um, yeah. so it, it it's exhausting. Yeah. You, you know, the... Uh... <clears throat> Uh, I, 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 um, I know that I get um, whatever I say about the U.S. election, I get um, I get attacked for. But um, I do see very, very clearly that whatever has happened in the last twelve months in the United States of America, um, whether it be um, the disappointments because people expected a certain election result or anything else, all of this is playing into the hands of God. In other words, um, even the disappointments, the, the things that have happened that were unexpected, um, God is using all of these things together um, and his primary purpose at the moment is awakening across America. I believe that there was uh, an expectation in America that awakening was just going to happen. It was going to be like a sovereign move of God and all these people were going to get saved. But 
um, throughout history, revival always comes through a people, a remnant people who get on their uh, faces before <laughs> God and pursue God at any cost so that they can have what has been promised to them. And for that to happen um, after seasons and seasons and seasons, even generations of uh, taking God for granted, um, God's kind of had to tip the whole uh, toy box upside down and uh, bring awakening to his people. And the whole story is, is it, it's not finished yet. It's not finished yet. I just hear God saying that to me. And God is a God of the uh, improbable, the impossible, and the supernatural. And so uh, I want to encourage you and all those of you who are joining us uh, from the United States of America that ultimately God will have his way. And he has not turned his back on the United States of America. But he wants a remnant that are pure and are totally committed to his purpose that he can move through them and release awakening across your nation. So... Um, Amy, I'm going to pray for you over this um, this demand that your soul has for certainty, uh, yeah. and and so, Lord, I just want to thank you, Father God, that that you are um, you are reorganizing the thoughts and intents of Mamie's heart, Lord. That Father God, that in a season of uncertainty that she clings primarily to the certainty that is you. I would break off in the name of Jesus Christ every encroachment of the enemy into her thought life and into her obsessions about certain things and that demand for certainty. And, uh, Lord, in a season of uncertainty, I release the gift of faith to her. Lord, so that Mamie would walk by faith and not by sight, that the need to control in a season of great uncertainty would be broken. That spirit of control that's trying to come and take over, I identify it now in the name of Jesus, controlling spirit. I identify you, I rebuke you, I bind you, and I take your influence re and, and remove it from Mamie, right now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, be delivered, be delivered, in Jesus' name. Who do we have free, Lucas? Um, we have... Got Rose and Renee there? Yeah, we've got Rose's team ready to go. Okay, put put her in with them, and, and Rose and Renee, we, I believe there's a, a, a controlling spirit that's trying to impose itself on Mamie's life, and uh, I believe God wants to break break that off. Okay, I think we'll do one more. I'm starting to run out of steam here a little bit. Are there any more responses to words of knowledge in the meeting today? Okay, I think I'll, um, I'm going to pray over the meeting and bless you guys and um, I'll leave the, the chat open for those that are being ministered to. Um, I want to thank you for joining us on the, the, the live stream, the Zoom today. And, um, and I just those of you who are in the US, can you just wave at me? Okay, so a little bit more than half of the meeting. So, Lord, I, I just thank you, Father God, that your word... Oh, hi, Michael and Juliana. I remember you guys from time before last. God bless you guys. Um, I, I just want to re-release re over you the prophetic word that was ministered earlier today. Um, and actually, I'll face this camera to do that. Um, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that, uh, that your word never returns to you void. And I would just declare over all our brothers and sisters from the United States that the word that was released over them would give them courage, Lord, would encourage them and challenge them. That even, Lord, at a time of great difficulty in their nation, that you prosper them, you grow their spheres of influence, you provide for them in every way. I thank you, Father God, that as they seek you, they will see incredible answers to prayer, that you would minister miracles through them, Lord, 
that they would understand their identity as part of the ecclesia of Jesus, that is to declare the manifold wisdom of God, even to principalities and powers, and see transformation, uh, repentance, revival, reformation come to the United States of America. Bless you guys. And for everybody in the meeting, I want to bless you and thank you for joining us. I believe the next uh, one of these that we'll be doing will be the first Saturday in March. I'll be checking with my team about that. Um, just look out for an email invitation or on Facebook or YouTube. We'll, we'll be announcing that meeting. God bless you and thank you for joining us today. And uh, we'll see you next time. God bless you.